Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can create some custom hover effects for a portfolio grid in your Squarespace website. We're going to make some adjustments to the color, to the way the text is displayed, and a couple of cool ideas that I think you're going to have a lot of fun customizing. Now, as always, the codes I'm about to share are listed in the description below, but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so I can show you how to set these up and what parts of these codes you'll want to change to make them uniquely yours. Let's get started. So here we are inside Squarespace. And before we get into any codes, let's hop into edit mode really quickly so I can show you how I have this portfolio set up. When we select edit section over here, I want to make sure you've selected the grid overlay layout. That's really important for the selectors that we're using. Now, if we go ahead and scroll down here, you're going to see all kinds of other custom settings. This is completely customizable. The only thing that has to do with hover effects here is show text after hover. I've toggled that on. You can have it say before hover if you'd like to, but I'm working with after hover. So if you want yours to look like mine before you get started with CSS, make sure you have that toggled on. Show text after hover. And again, the layout should be grid overlay. Assuming you've got all that set up, let's go and select exit. And we're going to navigate to design and then custom CSS. This is where we're going to paste the code we're using today. I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit and scroll down so we can watch some of these hover effects take action. So immediately you can see when I hover over it, there's already a built in hover effect. We're getting an overlay on top of the image here and the title of the project is showing up. Now, if you want to see the title all the time, we can do that with custom CSS with this line right here. It says portfolio text opacity 100% important. So it's going to show up no matter where my cursor is. Even though that hover effect for the opacity of this is gone, we can actually create a slightly different hover effect I'd love to share with you that I call the zoom title. I'm going to add a new line of code and paste it right here. And we can actually remove our other code. There we go. Now you'll notice the title actually reduced in size when we added this code. That's because of this part right here. It says transform scale 0.75. It's now 75% of the size that it was before. After that, it says transition all to S. That stands for two seconds. We'll get into that part in a minute. The next part I want you to pay attention to is what happens in this third line of CSS. This says grid item hover portfolio text transform scale one. That means when I hover over it, it's going to scale back up to full size. That's why I call this Zoom title. Pretty awesome, right? Now let's talk about the second part of the code where it says transition all to S important. That means I want this transition to take two seconds. That's why we're getting a slow increase in the size of text. And when I move my cursor off the object, it's going to slowly fade back to where it was before. If you remove this line from both spots, there we go. Now you'll see it happens instantly. So if you want it to be instant, just remove that transition. Otherwise, leave it in both locations. It'll slowly increase in size and slowly decrease in size. All right, that was our first hover effect, but I've got two more to share with you that I'm pretty excited about. The next one I wanted to share is what I call a gray to color. I'll remove all that code we just added. I'll paste it right here. And immediately, you'll see those images go to gray scale. The first part of this code says take that grid item, specifically that grid image, and give it a 100% grayscale filter. After that, I've said when we hover over the item, go ahead and turn that filter back to zero, make it full color. Now, this line of code right here is actually adjusting the portfolio overlay. Before we dig into this, I'll remove it and just show you what it looks like. You can see it's full color. But the overlay is so thick that it's really hard to see the full color image underneath. That's why I've added this line. This line of code says take that portfolio overlay, but actually make it a linear gradient background. The very bottom of it needs to be transparent. So see what happens here. Now we're going to see some of that full color image on the bottom with a little bit of the white color on the top. It has this linear gradient background. So super customizable. You can have it go in the reverse direction if you want, maybe say to top instead of to bottom. This is going to make it solid white at the bottom and transparent at the top. Here's what that looks like. Pretty interesting effect, super duper customizable. And if you don't want that at all, go ahead and just set this to opacity zero exclamation point important. And now we won't have the overlay at all, but we will still get that effect of grayscale to full color. Now let's reverse it. We're going to change this to a zero. We're going to change this to a one. And we're going to change our notes and have it say color 
to gray. There we go. Always change your notes if you're making notes in your CSS. Now that we've reversed it, it's going to go to grayscale on a hover. Again, we can go ahead and go back to that linear gradient background for the portfolio. I'm just going to copy this out of my notes and paste it right here. So if you want to have a little bit of that overlay, still totally an option. And again, adjust this to top to bottom. You can even change it to a degree if you want. Maybe we'll say 45 DEG and let's check that out. Pretty interesting. Definitely some fun stuff to play around with when it comes to that linear gradient background. However, you decide to customize that gradient or any of the hover effects that we covered today, just make sure you select save when you're done and you'll be good to go. All those codes that we just went over are listed in the description below. Just make sure you modify them so that they look uniquely yours and match the design style of your own Squarespace website. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I truly hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give me a like and a comment and definitely subscribe to my channel because I post a brand new tutorial every single week and I want to make sure you catch the latest. Thanks again for watching and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you'll love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. Now available in a Notion database, you can have access to all of the custom codes that I use for modifying Squarespace websites. In here, you'll find selectors, pre-made style snippets, and a bunch of pro tips. So even if you're brand new to all things CSS, you're going to love the content you'll find here. To get lifetime access to this Notion database of custom code for Squarespace, visit insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.